If you've been following Windows 10 news, then by now you've heard of Continuum, the feature that lets you plug your Windows phone into a monitor and keyboard to transform it into an approximation of a desktop computer. I tried it for the first time last week and was pretty blown away by its potential. But what exactly is Continuum? And maybe more importantly, what isn't it? I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Let's find out. Let's start with what Continuum is. Keep in mind that we're using it very soon after initial availability with a Lumia 950 mated to a Philco Magistouch Stealth keyboard and a Surface Arc mouse. Your mileage will vary with other devices and as Windows receives updates going forward. First and foremost, Continuum is a really good way to handle email and scheduling if you don't want to be confined to a phone's virtual keyboard. The new Outlook client takes to a large display very nicely, with support for multiple panes, multiple accounts, and a lot of formatting options to choose from once you actually get down to the business of writing an email. You can do that with either a Bluetooth keyboard or a wired one that plugs into the display dock, and you can get moving at a pretty good clip once you actually get down to the typing part. When it's time to make an appointment or check your schedule, there's a handy shortcut built right into Outlook to let you jump over to the calendar, which benefits greatly from the added space. In a pinch, Continuum can also be a really handy full-size browser. I say in a pinch because you're not going to want to use this for anything complicated or for a lot of tab juggling. More on this in a second. But for simple pages, like mostly text-based sites, it works pretty well. And if you're using it to show off some vacation photos or share a presentation in PowerPoint, then you're going to be right at home. You can do either of those through Miracast as well. If instead you're looking for news, weather, financial information, or something more specialized, you're going to get a better experience out of one of Microsoft's preloaded apps, which really shine when they get to spread out over a big display or TV. And some third-party apps like Tweedium have also jumped aboard, with more to come in the months ahead. Running a few apps at a time showcases another continuum strength. It really does replicate the feel of a full PC. You can use keyboard shortcuts like Alt F4 to close a program, Alt Tab to jump back to a previous app, the Windows key to bring up the start menu, which is just your phone's start screen, by the way. And if you're using a mouse, you can use right click in most of the places you'd expect. You can even browse some of the phone's file system using File Explorer. If you've got your phone connected to a Bluetooth speaker like I do, Continuum also functions as a surrogate media player. Most media apps still only run on the phone rather than in full screen, but there are workarounds like running Netflix in the browser, if you've got the patience. That patience is key to making Continuum work, because as much as it tries to be, a Windows phone running Continuum is not a full PC. You'll notice this if you try to download and run any legacy Windows programs, most of which are built for x86 processors. The Snapdragon SoC in the Lumia phones is ARM-based, and it can only run a smaller subset of apps designed for that architecture. So you can forget your dreams of downloading and running Steam, for example. It just won't work. Continuum is also not a multitasking powerhouse. It can be easy to forget that everything you see on the screen is being powered by the phone, but that's exactly what's happening. So you can't run apps side by side, nor can you even run them in individual windows. It's full screen or nothing. If you've been watching for a while, you know I'm a longtime Windows Phone fan. But as a Google user, that also means I've spent a long time chafing at the platform's ecosystem disadvantage. So the first thing I did when I got Continuum up and running was try to have a Google Hangouts conversation in the browser. Loading the Gmail interface was enough to crash Spotify, which I'd been using to play music in the background. And then Microsoft Edge hung with me for one Hangouts message before the phone ran out of memory and the whole browser crashed. This has happened repeatedly. So if you think you can use Continuum to graft a Google-friendly experience onto a Windows phone, well, right now, that's a pipe dream. All that can be boiled down into a pretty simple statement about what Continuum isn't. It's not an escape from the limitations of a smartphone. If you treat it like a PC, you'll be let down. Continuum is best enjoyed for what it is, an occasional larger workspace for your smartphone for light work. Keep that restriction in mind and you might very well find it quite useful, assuming you've got the hardware lying around to take advantage of it.
Our full Lumia 950 review lands later this week, folks. Watch out for it, both here on YouTube and at PocketNow.com, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, reminding you to keep your continuum quirky. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.